is the last video of 2022. I'm gonna take a short vacation and I will see you next year. And this video is a little bit of continuation of the video that I made last week. Last week, the video, as a part of that video, we were bringing the members of a certain Active Directory group inside Power Apps. We have done that a few times. I can recall at least another video other than last week that I've been doing the same thing, but we never got into the real Azure AD connector to see what we have inside it and what are the limitations and some of the surprises that you may see inside it. So today in this video, it's not a very long video, but we want to take a quick look at the Azure AD Get Group Members function and see what it can do and how we can go around the limitations that it has. Let's get into it and see how much fun we can have as the last video with the next video, hopefully in the new year. Let's get into it. Let's start by getting a group members from an Azure AD and bring it to Power Apps. So obviously we need an AD group and an app inside Power Apps, which I have both of them. Inside Azure AD, I have created a group called Taskers, and this group has only three members, Ali Reza, James, and Jason. But we don't care about this part. If I go to the overview, you see this group has an ID called Object ID. I copy this because I need this. If you have access to Azure Portal, get the ID directly from there. If you don't, talk to your cloud or network administrator and ask them to give you the object ID of the group that you want to get the members and bring it inside your Power Apps. So I go back inside Power Apps. I've already created an app. This app is just one plain screen with one button on it. And when someone clicks on this button, I want to get the members of this group and put them in a variable or a collection so that we can use it. So the first thing is making a connection. So I click on this data connection. I click on add data and I search for Azure AD. And I click on this guy. Boom. I have a connection to my Azure Active Directory that I can use. And now if I click on this button, I can go to Azure AD dot get group members. And just like this, I put the object ID here and I close the bracket. Whatever it returns is a nested table, so table inside table, that contains a list of all those users. Let me show you how it looks so you can adjust it accordingly. Set, I put it in a variable var, for example, taskers, members, what a weird name, comma, and I close the bracket here. If I just run it and push this button and I close the app again, I click on this guy. And if I double click on it, you will see it's a very weird object. It has two properties. One of them is name, the other one is value, and the value has a table inside it. This is what we are looking for. So to get this table and put it inside this variable, I need to say, give me the value of this guy, not the whole thing. So this time, if I save it and run it, again, I push the button. And this time, if I just double click on this variable, you will see it has a table of everything that I need. Display name, given name, department name, whatever, job title, sorry, department is missing here. Anyway, we have a table and this table can be used anywhere. We are good. Let me just show it in a data table. So I search for data table, bingo. I can just expand it. And for the items, I just put my variable there and we are good. It doesn't show you anything because it's just a variable and data table tries to find the structure of the fields that are supposed to be displayed from the database in the backstage. It can be a SharePoint list, Dataverse table or something like that. But at the moment, we don't have this connection. So we need to go here and add the fields that we want to display here. So I can come here and I say, show me display name, show me the given name, show me the mail, for example, job title. And I click on add and you will see all those members are added here. 
If I just run it, you will see all these three members. Fantastic. But that was not our topic. We had three members here, and we can see all those three members here. So what was the problem? The problem is that, for example, we have a user called Sarah, for example, and we add Sarah to AD group. The app has been already built, and we go back to my Power Apps app, and we search for Sarah, and we don't find her. Now, what are the possible reasons that you add a user there and you cannot find it inside Power Apps or not even just adding it here? You know the user is there and Power Apps doesn't just pick it up. There are two causes for this problem. First thing is that Azure AD .get group members has a second parameter. And that second parameter is the top number because by default, when you use get group members, it returns only the top 100. So if the group has more than 100 members, it only shows you the top 100 and whatever else that you add to that user group, it's not gonna show it to you. To solve that problem, we need to go back here and let me just format this. I hate to see it like this. And as a second parameter, right after your ID, you can use the top parameter. So dollar sign, top, and I close the curly bracket and I say, show me the top 200. If there are more than 200 members in that AD group, you may want to say 300, 400, but it maxes out at 999. So if there is more than 999 or 1000 members or anything above that, get group members is not the way to go. It doesn't return whatever that you want. This is a typical reason, and usually it doesn't happen during testing because you don't have so many users in that group, but when you take it to production, all of a sudden, lots of users are added, and maybe even the testers will not see it, and you see all of a sudden that, hold on a second, I add that user to the group. Why it doesn't show up inside Power Apps? That can be one reason. Keep that in mind, hard ceiling of 999 is the maximum number that your get group members function returns. But that's not the only reason. Get group members doesn't really evaluate the user membership. Get group member goes, finds this Active Directory group and returns whatever that is directly inside it. What does that mean? Let's say you have an AD group called group A and under group A, you have group B. Under group A, you also have Sarah, but under group B, you have James and Jason. If you are using the get group members for group A, it returns group B and Sarah. It doesn't return James and Jason. For us as developers, that's obvious. But when it comes to the cloud and AD administrators, they say, hold on a second, you want James to be in group A? He is already there because James is in group B and group B is inside group A. From the permissions perspective, from the Active Directory perspective, it's perfect. But for us, when we want to get the direct group members from Power Apps using Azure Connection, we literally query whatever that is directly here, and that's why we don't find it. It returns you the group, but it does not return whatever that is inside that group. And that was it. Next video is going to start with Happy 2023. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me all this year. Thank you for your support, likes, comments, kind words, reviews on my courses, and everything that you helped me achieve this year that definitely I couldn't do without you being there. So thank you. I wish you a new year full of joy and happiness for you, your family, and all your beloved ones. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next year.